they're gonna have Goku and Broly or Gohan and Broly fuse. So so you get you get a double fusion. Mm. I want someone to fuse with Broly. That'd yeah. be open to. I'm just, I'd look, I yeah, I'd be happy with a Vegito because I want to see more of him, but like I'm tired of Goku and Vegeta. I'd be so happy with just anyone else coming in and being like huh. contributing to this. Did you- and that's why I do I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off. I'm just oh, finished this. No, you're fine. That's why I do think that they powered up Piccolo and Gohan in this story because it's canon. They needed them to be at a certain level to hopefully kind of like justify whatever is coming for the super manga maybe it's something to where we really do need goku uh vegeta broly piccolo and gohan to be as strong as they possibly can because of what's to come Mm. maybe that's what they're leaning to maybe i'm giving them too much credit honestly because it's dragon ball and they no bro we're gonna get bro jiku God damn it, Gary, what the Dude, fuck? Dude, I bet you I bet you anything. I bet you anything. He hasn't listened to anything you said the past no, 30 seconds. No, he's been waiting. He's, been, he's just been... And, and, no, he's actually been contextualizing how he pr- pronounced the name. I, yeah. Mark was, um, when Totally Not Mark was reviewing all the One Piece arcs for the first time, right? He would go through and divide each video up to like, you know, an arc or like an arc and a half or something, right? And the funniest part was like, Mark has no context about, you know, current One Piece, right? What's been going on, the revelations that come out and everything. So when he's like, say, around Water 7 or something, and he's coming up with these theories or whatever, and then freaking editor son or his editor son, I guess, is like, adding low-key like visuals and stuff that like he's not going to understand but people who are caught up are going to understand like (laughs) Like, for for example the one that i can think of is when he covers reverse mountain at the very very beginning and it shows laboon and everything you know the song that he puts in the background of that a fucking being sake sake. (laughs) yeah he puts that in the background and everyone in the comments is like your editor is awesome because like (laughs) mark has no clue he's never even heard it at that point yeah so and ever since i saw that like i started looking for his small little things and i love editor son he is amazing especially like he'll take like little snippets and moments from like the episodes and stuff of characters reacting Mm -hmm. to stuff and he'll like put them in the right context yeah to fit like what theories he's coming up with and stuff like Mm -hmm. i I don't know it's really good bro i feel like so i feel like i've seen uh certain parts of the videos when like maybe the word donut comes around and he just throws an image or two of a donut (laughs) and i'll let you know what that like i'll let you figure that out dude dude he's he's for the warning he's died what (laughs) but yeah no (laughs) it's like you're proud of that i am i saw i saw a video i you know why i'm traumatized this morning, like first thing this morning, I was downstairs. I was waiting for this game to download. And I opened, I opened Instagram. Mm-hmm. And that's where I fucked up. I opened Instagram, and the first thing I see is somebody like they're having, they're having like a like a creamy coffee drink, right? Mm-hmm. But it was <laughs> Luffy holding Ace, and he had the hole, and they like put the straw in the oh hole and just started God. drinking it. I was like, what the fuck? I've, I've seen, have you seen the ones where like it's, you go to get boba? Yeah. And, and on the top it, it has ace and you take your straw and go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucked up. Someone did that and, punch show, it on his and face. showed their freaking like the cashier and like, Hey, look. And they're like, damn bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, man. making dead ace jokes are so much fun now. That's how we Uh, deal with the pain. It's 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 almost like And that's Anime Alchemist Podcast for you. It's almost like Oda knew people were gonna troll and spoil Ace being killed. Right? Mm. So it's like the whole thing is like, oh no, he wasn't executed. He got saved. Like somebody spoiled it for me, right? They they literally just walked in the room and they were like Ace dies in one piece. And then I walked out of the room. I was like, I fucking hate. I was just yelling in the background because of the work, right? That's awful. When did they the spoil floor, that for you? Back. Like, what, what part were you on when, when that got spoiled? I was watching, um, I was in Skypea. Really? Oh, that's yeah. so jacked. That's fucked because you still get to see more, like, later on. That's before you even see the whole Blackbeard and Ace fight. Right, oh. Yeah. That's fucked so up. you sit there and it's like, does it happen here? Does it happen here? Like you just know, you don't know. Dang. Well, what's fucked up is it was like 
some pretty recent shit too. Like I, I think at the time the manga was getting into Punk Hazard. Wow. Hmm. So. God. <sighs> yeah. No, nah, I was pretty pissed though. I would be too. I, that's like the one thing I knew about One Piece in general was the fact that like Ace, Ace died, and. But but it they still bait and switches you. Yeah, it was a bait and it's switch. Like, oh, he's gonna get executed, and it's like, oh no, that it's not gonna happen like that. And mm-hmm. he, uh, you know, Luffy goes through all this effort, and he succeeds, and he does save him. And mm-hmm. it's like, yes, he's not gonna. Execute yeah, him. and at that they point, were fucking with me. At that point, I thought like, oh, maybe like the Ace dying thing was like a meme or something, and like yeah. people were just saying that because like they feel like he should have or whatever. And I was like, oh, thank God, like you know, I'm really glad he doesn't. And then, like, the next episode, A Stars. And I'm like, what? What? Uh, they really yeah. should not have named that episode that. I feel yeah, like they could nah. have done with anything else. And they're just waiting for it the entire time. You know what? You know what? I, I, like, I don't know 100%. <laughs> it's, it's just. <laughs> but, like, bro, like, I feel like Oda confirmed <laughs> that that was okay. Like, Oda had to be like, all right, yeah, just go name ahead. the episode like that. Yeah. Probably. Like, like, think about it. Like, I, like, I can't, I can't prove <laughs> yeah, that that no, he that no, he. He probably told them. He was like, yeah. "No, it, name it Ace Dies. That's what <laughs> I named the chapter. That's what I want the episode named." They're just looking at him like, oh, hey, "You're re- a dick, really?" Bro. Just I like, always yeah. wondered why they never named some of the episodes the same, like as the chapter. You know what I mean? Like, it never is the same thing. Even if they're adapting, they never adapt a full chapter. It's usually like ten pages of the chapter. But it's never the same name. It's always something else that Toei comes up with. And a man like, who can spend 25 years just building the world for his manga, I'm pretty sure it can be considered the greatest troll ever. <laughs> Bro, did, you, uh, know that, yeah, did yeah. you know that he has like a, a shark, a, like a giant shark toilet thing? Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it's like a custom bath that he what? had designed and it's like a shark or something. Or, no, no, it's like something. he has a shark in his in like oh really oh I thought you were talking about his bath like he no, had a oh he's a got like or like or no like a, bath too. It's, a, it's like a giant uh like megalodon right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but he's got baller. a custom bath too and it's yeah. like got a bunch of dragons and oh stuff. I can pull it up Let's see. oh yeah the internet's great <laughs> <laughs> bro I saw that and I was like. This is the kind of shit that I would expect out of Oda. Hey, I'll okay. if I'm being honest, like you got to think this man thought this man thought up One Piece. He had that custom built, bro, like with the dragon and everything. This is the greatest man on the planet. It's so cool. Also, he has a PS5. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You see that? You see that shark to the right? To the right, this right one? there. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's his. There you go. Yo, that's where he heck. poops. That's where that's where Oda poops. Then, wait, 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 and then go to the left. That one right there? Yeah, that's his bathtub. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Dude. (laughs) Why did they have to get a shot of him in the bathtub? Because he's Goda. He was probably like, hold up, let me get in. Dropped his clothes and they were like, oh, what the fuck? fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Oda's the big dick champ, bro. I I fucking hope so. Like, you're in my house, first of all. Isn't yeah. there a picture of? I got money that we, like if he, Akira Toriyama taking a piss, just like online, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, like yeah, there is. Publish that shit. Yeah, he's just really. Taking a piss. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. It's like it's like really young Akira Toriyama, bro, and he's just out of urinal, just taking a piss. I didn't know that. Oh, for real? <laughs> no. Yeah, I got you. I got I got fifty bucks. I think they got pictures of Oda taking a shit on that toilet. But he was actually taking a shit, and then they were like, "Yeah, we oh, can't do this. Let's get out of here. It's <laughs> let's just get to take a picture of the toilet. That's cool. We're gonna leave. <laughs> cool, we're gonna leave. <laughs> this man is the fucking goat. I don't even know why we're talking about this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's. Maybe but that's the Anime Alchemist podcast. I'm Emery. I'm Gary. I'm Martin. It's episode fifty-seven. And spoiler warning. Yeah. Oh yeah. Spoiler warning. Let's talk about some anime. Shit on one of the news now. After that. We've been doing so good about our anime news. I feel like we always just have more and more. There's a lot going on in the anime world, bro. Yeah, I know for real. I mean, that would do as much as like we can complain in about animation in general. There's just a lot happening. As much as we want to complain about the uh, like sudden cultural phenomenon that it's become, and like you know how like 
so unbelievably mainstream now. I'm about it, bro. Yeah, I yeah. Just because it. this is this is the Dude, upside I, of it is that it just I used to have to wait for a convention to be able to buy merch. Now I can just go to oh. a store and buy merch. Like yeah. at that com- at, at Anime Matsuri, they had they had a lot of really great stuff, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff they have, I could get at the stores. You mm-hmm. know, like a, a store across I, the street I, I'd or have something. To go you know and hunt, I mean? it, hunt for it, but I could find it. Well, I you find it I mean? crazy because of the manga specifically. Like the last time I went to the mall, remember? I think I was on the phone with you. These random stores are just all of a sudden having manga in their yeah. store. Like Hot Topic sells manga now. Walmart, it's a million. Walmart, Walmart and Target, manga. bro. Walmart, Target. All these like big mainstream like stores just casually are carrying manga now. And I think that's so cool because yeah. like, it feels like a normal thing now. You know, you can just go and find it. And it doesn't feel like it's a, a secluded thing that like, you know, is only for a select group of people that like that thing. Like, no, just most people kind of like that stuff now. Yeah. It's just so great. Cool. I love it. I love it. But yeah, I just want to talk about that, Matt, real quick. Um, so if you guys don't know, uh, I made a video about this a while back. So if you guys don't know, a couple of days ago, I even made a TikTok about this, but it got confirmed that One Punch Man season three is going to be confirmed. You guys can check out TikTok at uh, MV Joro. You can check out Gary at Grishma Taro. And you can check out the TikTok one. Or the end of the podcast one on TikTok at Anime Alchemist Podcast, as well as listen on Wednesdays. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you like. Turn those notifications on. Leave a comment. Let us know if you guys like the video. We have a video out, hopefully by now, reviewing all the different ghost flavors that we can get our hands on. Make sure you guys check that out. No, we have reviewed all of them. Just no, oh, yeah, sure. we we tried all the ones we could get our hands on. We couldn't get our hands on too. So yeah, yeah. Make sure you guys check that out on YouTube. Uh, be coming out on Thursday, Anime Alchemist Podcast. And remember, you can check out the audio on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and Anchor, and Spotify. Okay, now back to some great anime news. My bad. That One Punch Man news got me weirdly like excited because I've heard such good things about the manga lately. Oh, that's it, when the manga is going to get... It gets nuts. Yeah, and if it gets like that crazy in that season, then it might give me a reason to actually watch all of season two. Or if anything, I might just read it instead because i really like the way it looks i've seen random panels of it i picked it up and i love the art style for it season one is all hype train Mm -hmm. you love the art style for it i do yeah you'll love mob you will love mob Mm. i have good news about that (laughs) you don't say (laughs) season two of one punch man Mm -hmm. is a cock tease really in my opinion yes bro i have never been so hyped for something and then it stopped. I was and like, it's dude, like Black Clover. Mm, seriously, mm-hmm. dude, I'm, I'm dead serious. I was watching season two at weekly as it was coming out. Really? Yeah. Wow. No, I. Re- that's the I issue. I just it's heard really good, and then they stopped. And they just stopped making it. I mean, they just like that was season two, and it's just like. It's very much your pace of comedy too. Like some mm. of the humor is like really dry mm-hmm. and sudden, and it's so fucking funny. I honestly didn't go into the, like watching season two because I I personally didn't hear a lot about it. All that I heard was that they switched animation studios and people weren't really like fucking with it. And I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. And that wasn't the reason I didn't watch it, but I guess it kind of helped me to not watch it or whatever because there's other shit or whatever. But I think the animation's great. Really? Yeah. There's a the my um. Honestly, probably one of my favorite fights in the entire like pieces is that it has been animated. Better than the end of season one? Yeah. That fight was insane. Yeah. Ooh. But watching that was crazy? Yeah. That's all I've seen. You should watch Mob. You should watch Mob. Literally every Okay. No, no, I'm just gonna tell I've got I've got a mob. I got a mob. I'll have time. Mob Psycho season three is gonna go off, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They apparently all the episodes are already ready to be aired and finished. Mm-hmm. But also, there's an episode in there that's supposed to have like 20,000 hand drawn frames. What? Yes. Wow. Whoa, what the fuck? That's insane. Yeah. I'm assuming it's like the finale episode. Do you know what happens it in it? Have you read I, that or no? No, okay. I haven't read the Mob Psycho. Oh, uh, okay. Anyways, it's so huge, bro. Stay away from the manga. 
Yes, yeah, please, no, that one, please. that one, okay, good, please. good, because that anima- animation for it, bro. Because if you like the animation for One Punch Man, mm-hmm. it's the same style for Mob Psycho, except okay. for that crazy fight yeah, with art. Boros. Imagine all those effects. <laughs> yeah, that it, like in in Mob Psycho, he's he's a um, what what's it called? A uh, telekinesis. Um, 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 a psych. I mean, I guess he's a psychic. psychic like yeah. he uses psychic abilities, right? So mm-hmm. imagine the trippy visuals that come with that. It, it, they they do a really good job. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, I can stay away from the manga for that. And same with One Punch Man. I don't really like as much as I do like the random shit that I've seen. I can hold off and just kind of watch it, especially since season three has been confirmed. So I'll pull a Gary and I'll wait. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Um. Oh, this is such sweet, beautiful anime news. Oh. Kind of, kind of. So they're going to be announcing some new information on Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 on September 18th. And I hope it's a, if, like an if, if it's too big, I'm sorry, like it's too big of a cultural phenomenon for them to not put that in and then that in. That's less than a month away. Uh, you know, you know what happens like right after, like what? Mm-hmm. Okay, they're obviously gonna put that. Yeah, I hate that, y'all. That'll be just a couple episodes. Read it, bro. <laughs> yeah, but then they're gonna this do. It would be I so fun to talk about season it. All two, three season of us, two, bro. season two, bro. If it doesn't have the Shibuya, uh, uh, it's not gonna have the Shibuya incident. What? No, I talked about this with Eric yesterday. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, no, we totally talked about. It. We were trying to like figure out what it had, right? Like what what season two might be and what season three might be because. There is a lot of manga out. It is close to 200 chapters in the manga. Yeah. Right? I believe that season two will cover the next part that we both know, yeah. right? And the the small thing in between mm. that and the Shibuya arc, I don't know if you've read that yet, but there's a small little thing that is very important mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that needs to be shown to give you context for the Shibuya arc because the Shibuya arc is long as fuck, bro. I think- Not long as fuck, but it's long. That's a tiny- Okay, that first thing, that's tiny, bro. The, the first thing is tiny. That's a one three. episode thing, or maybe two episode thing. Are you talking about the thing before the thing? That's a one. That that, that the <laughs> the look on your face is fucking priceless, Gary. <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, we can use words, and he's so, like the the flashback. Yeah, yeah. So the like, thing that's gonna take that. that's gonna take like four episodes. No way, it'll take more than four episodes. You're a high as shit. You don't think it'll be like he doesn't? Uh, we should just stop. <laughs> No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't think, dude, there's a lot. Like, they can, I know it's fighting. I know it's, you know, it has some fightings and the fightings are usually quick, but honestly, what are you looking at? He's looking just at these, looking at this. Is he trying to communicate? <laughs> Wait, why'd you take that off? I mentioned that last week. Oh, you did? Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, just making sure. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm thinking like, 75% of it is going to be the, the beginning part and then the flashback. And then the last part of it is going to be, we're almost done here. <laughs> Just don't hold out for like two more minutes. <laughs> and then the last part is going to be the setting the stuff, it up, the setting it up right before. And then that major fight too. And the revelation with, uh, I want you to take in this consideration how much it was in season one. How many chapters did that cover? Like 60 almost. Hmm. There's an about the author section in here, and it's by Sanji. It's really cool, yeah. It's like this cool. is great. Okay, well, we'll wrap up that JJK news. But, yeah, yeah. I think personally the Shibuya is going to be in season three. Okay. That's just me. Okay. Um, ooh, I'm going to leave that one to you, Gary, because I did not know about that. The, um, the VA thing? The oh, yeah. Uh, apparently the <clears throat> voice actor, the English voice actor, for Ichigo got in like a really bad car accident. Oh shit. Like, he's okay. He, he, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, but he he like put something out like I'm lucky to be alive. Damn. You know he was just in Houston for the anime Houston thing? It was, he was on the way. We missed it by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Know. It was at the beginning of the month of April. It was while I was in Florida. Oh, uh, then I mean. Yeah. Um or, or, no, 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 he was on all the way. But he he was on the way to a convention and it happened. <laughs> what if it, it wasn't no, 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 no. no. He, he, he had like tweeted something after that. Like, oh, I'll okay, see okay. All there. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Damn. But yeah, yeah, I mean, he's okay. We're, we're lucky he is. We were, we were about to get the thousand year blood war arc. Like, imagine mm-hmm. something happened to him. 
I, do you think he's already recorded stuff for the dub, or do you think they're still working on that? They're probably. Hmm. I don't they, know. They no no no. I, I don't bet they so, didn't because they haven't even started syndicating episodes yet. Mm-hmm. I really fucking hope that they don't do it like all at once or something. I want them to release it weekly the way yeah. everything else mm-hmm. is normally done. Maybe I mean Disney's Disney Plus kind of has the. Weekly, thing. weekly the weekly release kind of thing down. Okay, so they, I'll be happy. They, they did that thing. with uh, with uh, Hawk or Hawkeye. Oh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. All their Marvel shows they usually, you know, or I mean, they're, I mean, they're gonna release the original stuff probably weekly, but when they have it dubbed, it'll probably just be an announcement being like, oh, it'll be available, and then it'll just yeah be all on there. Do well, you think they would show the old... they do it with the dubs really? That or they'll like. I mean, I don't know. Are the dubs in in syndication? Because if they put it in syndication, then it's like, yes, it'll be streamed every week. Maybe. It might be one of those things where, like, the dub might just be behind. Like, it might just be a while before the dub mm-hmm. gets there because they want to see how it does first. Like, like with One Piece. Like, with One Piece. Like, with a lot of shows. Even, um, like, My Dress Up Darling, it wasn't, like, a simulcast type thing. That That's what it is. Simulcast is when they, like, dub it right as like the the episode comes out and i think like the week later it releases my, it my anyway. hero does okay. that so are they my hero that? simulcast my hero. too yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah i don't think so it'll if, get that treatment they do it with that then they or, might but i I. the the reason that that works though mm-hmm. is because like typically when with voice actors when Damn. you find when when your voice is dubbed typically like when you find your dubbed voice person, like that's your dubbed voice person forever. Mm-hmm. So like if like you get, I don't know if the Zorro on the one does. The Zorro, like Chris Abbott thing. Yeah. But like, so like if the same voice actor who does like sub Zorro mm-hmm. goes off and does something else, it's probably going to be Chris Abbott that does it do. Uh Yes, that does. No. That does no. That, but, okay, it's some there, but it's heavily here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah once yeah, you yeah. once it's picked, that's done. You're, that's fair. Yeah, like I really, they're not going to change each other's yeah. actor at all. Like it's going to be the same guy. What I, did you have earlier? I just, I just think it's lit that they're going to be making Disney money now, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like they get to put on their resume like that they, they voice acted for, for Disney's Disney. production. Mm. Mm. Like that—that's a flex. It kind of is, yeah. That's Hopefully they'll give it more shit. work. I love Ichigo's voice actor, like the dub. I think he does phenomenal. He's also Lelouch in Code Geass. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. great. I just stitched the video. It is. Oh, you did? Yeah. I was like, "What got you into Bleach?" <laughs> Want to know what my answer was? What? I make oh, anime. I, I make anime content, and you can't talk shit about an anime you haven't seen. <laughs> And you guys can take that to the bank. You know, what's really funny, though, is like you talk so much shit about Bleach on there, but like you even mentioned on there that you actually really like Bleach. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I like Bleach. people who just see your hot takes on TikTok and just assume that you're talking shit and don't know what you're talking about. Like, I think that's so funny because if they just tried a little harder, like scrolled or looked through some of your content, they could tell that like, no, he actually likes it. He Mm -hmm. wouldn't watch all of it if he didn't like it. And he wouldn't reference it so much if he didn't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of content creators get like shit for that too, because like even we've kind of like fallen into that, you know, and kind of miss weird uh, stigma. Miss like judge based off the of first video. Like it was actually, I think one guy that was probably talking shit about One Piece or something, but like he was just he was just talking shit for no reason, right? But he actually has watched all of it and watches it weekly and has like One Piece figures and artwork and shit like that. Like you see it in the background. I'm like, okay, so he actually does like One Piece. Like he's just doing it for the content. Mm-hmm. And we kind of do the same thing, so I can't even be mad at him. So yeah, it's I like find the, that funny. It's like those videos whenever people have like all the collectibles for an anime, right? But they're throwing it away because they're like, "No, this, no, this is trash. <laughs> no, this is trash. I, I just I bought it to throw it away." Mm-hmm. I, I think those videos. Those videos are, are funny. It's just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, buddy, my uh, come off like, the why, shelf. why do you have all that? <laughs> <laughs> so no one else will buy it. In. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny angle like, on, so <laughs> no one else will buy it it's like damn you're committed yeah. <laughs> um it's, that reminds me uh have you guys seen um oh god 
Okay, roll past this. Never mind. I'm forgetting the name of the movie. But if I remember, I'll ask you guys. Okay. But it was ranking, like ranking of kings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Confirmed. Season two. Confirmed season two. Twenty twenty three. Let's go. I fucking love that show. Yeah. So it's it supposed so to like start like airing on TV. Really? In Did, Japan. Do you know if it, did they say early twenty twenty three or late fall? Well, nothing it says twenty twenty three. Well, next year's gonna be good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this year has been pretty crazy. Yeah, for real. Like we next year's already out. starting off pretty stacked. Well, we have we've had a lot of good things happen, but a lot of really good mangas got got drowned, bro. They got cut off and buried. Mm-hmm. That's also the side of the industry that people don't pay attention to, honestly. I mean, bro, that's okay. So, like, everybody's. I, I think this has always been like a hot take for us, or I don't probably not so much a hot take anymore, but it's always been something we've preached. As great as it is, the anime industry blowing up and like growing into what it is, mm-hmm. the more that happens, the more the manga industry dies. Yeah, it sucks. which you wouldn't like, think that honestly, because it's like if you like the anime so much, then wouldn't you want to go and like support you know the original yeah, source oh, material? And everything? That's why we always say support. Go the buy the manga and go buy the manga. Mm-hmm. Like if you want the anime, go buy the manga. Support the industry. Rather than just reading it online. And honestly, uh, I had that feeling, and I I even mentioned it to you yesterday when we were on the phone. Like, I thought I liked Jujutsu Kaisen, and then I started reading it, and it made me want to go out and buy, like, these random volumes that had, like, the parts that I really enjoyed. And it made me want to support it because I want to see it keep being animated. So, like, that's the first thought that I have, personally. So, I wish, like, more people kind of, like, thought about it like that. You know, you enjoy this anime so much. Like, why don't you go out and, like, Actually, support it. You don't have to. No one's telling you to buy the entire series. Like that is, that's a lot of money. I understand that. That's a lot of shelf space. But buying just a couple or two, you know, like random chapters that you personally really mm-hmm. like, supports the manga, like the manga creators. And it's just, I don't know. Like something about having a physical copy is just really nice. It, it is. That's all it is to me. Careful you though, it's a dangerous addiction. Okay. It is a dangerous addiction. I mean, it starts really quick. Yeah. Get you get one thing and it's like oh yeah I like uh, I remember this I like this scene, and next thing you know you have a full series. Hmm. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey Henry, what'd you buy yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> the last piece is for Black Clover. Yeah, I now have every physical copy of or every physical volume for Black Clover. So yeah, yeah nope. that's out right I'm now. In, that's out right now. Yeah, I'm incredibly proud of it. And uh, if you don't like it, eat shit. Okay. Also, speaking of eating shit, Netflix is done producing the One Piece live action. Like apparently, they're they're, they're 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 done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yep. All the entirety of One Piece is no. It's not the entirety of One Piece. You (laughs) know that. (laughs) You fucking know that, bro. Because I I saw like I saw ships and stuff and settings from like further on. Mm. They're already done shooting. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna assume they didn't get very far. They can't do it all. They can no, only they probably, do they a probably, section of it, and bro, if it does well, they probably only got the through. They probably light. only got through Arlong Park. Yeah, I see it ending. Maybe they got Logetown. Maybe is Smoker casted? Smoker is casted. Okay, then they. Okay, they probably got like. I bet you. I, I'll have to make a bet right now. Okay. Mm. Okay. Wait. Just, just a nice gentleman's bet. How many episodes? How many episodes do you think are confirmed? It'll be for the first season. I think it's been confirmed already. For like, really? Like ten or twelve. If it is, I can tell you exactly where it's going to leave off. I'm gonna look it up. Like, I actually, don't think that. Uh, almost, almost to a like key moment. No, I don't think there's one yet. No, it, okay, if Smoker's... If not, then it'll probably end at Arlong Park. Yes, if Smoker's not cast, it will end at Arlong Park. Ooh, somebody wants Jeffrey Dean Morgan to do it. I'd love that. From The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. That'd be fucking cool. Hell yeah. But, okay, so, if if they don't... Okay, like, like if they do cast him, and like, or if he is casted or whatnot, like, and it gets passed then, it's literally going to stop with them going up the red line. Like it'll be like that moment of like hitting the peak, and then that'll be it. So I want to see how they do 
Luffy turning into a balloon and bouncing the ship <laughs> off of the wall. I'm so curious to see how they're going to do the dude, rubber dude, effects, dude, bro. Dude, it's dude. either going to be like absolute dog shit mm-hmm. or, or it'll be, be really cool. cool. I like, just want to see Frankie. It's going to be a while before we see Frankie. Bro, he's the the like the goofiest looking character. If they can't get no. Frankie right, they won't be able to get... Bro, they, they won't even be able to do Moria if they can't get Frankie oh right. I, imagine Brooke, point. too, bro. I'd be so disappointed if they went with just a straight face like Skull that or doesn't like change CGI. facial expressions. It has to do something. They have to do something to where Brooke can actually show facial expressions because that is like the most important part of him as a character. It's his fucking facial expressions, the way he laughs, the way he like screams and shit. You know what I mean? Like he's a funny dude. You can't do that with a straight, like just regular skull. Mm-hmm. That shows no emotion. Very like anime aspects of it because it's gonna be very CGI based, right? Yeah, it has to be for a be. show like this. You can't. Yeah, do... but I hope <laughs> they keep like kind of like the cartoonish movements, right? Like him laughing and the skull moving. Yeah, that'd be really you know? funny. Like stuff like that, because it it's like adds that little body humor touch that that One Piece has. Yeah, be able to do that in the live action would be impressive. It's gonna I be. We'll say it like I always say it. I have no expectations. Yeah, I don't want to say I have low expectations or high. I just have no expectations. So we'll see what happens. I just hope that we don't get hit with some Dragon Ball Evolution bullshit because everything that has been said and done has been to like assure fans. And assure Oda that we gonna we yeah, got this. Right? We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it justice. You know, to I be swear, honest with you, if I, I were swear, bro, if I were the one producing this, right, I wouldn't have built the hype behind it. I no. would have not said a word. I would have been like, "Yeah, we're doing this," and then that's it. I wouldn't have been like, "Oh, we're working with Oda, so making sure it's super accurate. Everyone's a fan of One Piece." I would not be saying any of that. That way, if it tanks, everyone kind of is like, "Yeah, we figured." But if it does amazing, everyone's like. Oh my god, they actually pulled it off. And then that builds you your hype. And then you immediately get that green light for the next like season or section or whatever. Um, you you know, I would do. <sighs> you know, I, you say this, and now that you have said it, it's gonna, like, I'm sorry, it's the, like, it increases the odds. The hype's too real now. It's because they built up an expectation up, for yeah, the they, fan base, yeah, and they, it's just they done it, fucked up now. It's impossible for a live action show to recreate the magic that is this show. Like, unfortunately, this show. As, even as an anime it is so unique when you compare it to other kind. So try comparing okay, okay, it to other shows. Okay. Like no, but think think about scenes like right whenever um, Bellamere is about to get shot. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like it's like oh she comes out and she's like oh just kill me you know my two kids they mm-hmm. rush out boom dies yeah. in front of him like you remember seeing that animated yeah you remember reading the manga now imagine like a very dramatic like theatrical movie version of that mm-hmm. if they can pull something like that off like if they can do a scene like that and do it justice and have the emotional weight if, then and then there's some hope right they can okay. make me like okay. tear up at like any if they can make me tear up at Nami's like Luffy mm-hmm. help me scene, mm-hmm. that's how I know that they they did a good job. It may not be as amazing as the original, but if they can manage that for me, if I don't get goosebumps for, for that, and if I don't turn around and want to like break something the moment I see that axe go up in the air, they didn't do enough. It. It's like certain that, like personal like like I too. want like I. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard see, to deliver. That, yeah, I know, but like, I, I want to. I want yeah. like it's the anime. The to. anime has done for me. It's like I want to be there and I want to feel Nami's pain all over and again. Look and, and just turn around and look and be like, he's really doing all that. Mm-hmm. If because you, that's what you felt originally, right? Mm-hmm. Like it is impossible to <laughs> to not have expectations. Unfortunately, like um, that scene. That scene where he's destroying the room. Like if exactly, that's what that I'm saying. Justice, that's what I'm certain, saying. There's certain things where they have to do it properly. If they if they and if they fuck that up, man, like they're they're. they're but sh- but you have to think everybody's expectations are different. Everybody likes different aspects of it, right? Yeah. So, like <sighs> that is true. Part yeah. Might be something that we really we really enjoy, but some people it's it's Baratier. You know, I love. Bar- that's the next one that yeah. I was like going to bring up. If 
Baratie really almost brought a tear to my eye when Sanji left. And when he thanked Zeph, it's one of my favorite moments from Sanji. Like, I, I fucking loved it because I, I vividly remember watching that and the way I felt the first time I watched it. Because it pulled out, like, that raw emotion that I was like, whoa, like, this is an anime and it's <laughs> making me feel like that? Like, what the heck? I only associated that with other shows or movies or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like one of those first examples. And then you get Arlong Park and then you get other stuff, right? So it's like those moments that, for me as a fan, made me fall in love with One Piece. So this, you have to take into consideration, this might be some people's very first introduction to One Piece. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. And that's really dangerous because if it's shit, you might push them away to the point that they may never even want to watch the original stuff. Like what they did with four kids. Yeah, that's exactly like what they did with four, four kids. kids. Yeah, and like that's uh, that's dangerous. They I know that they... Uh, man, you guys brought up the Bratier and now I'm really concerned about one, two, like two iconic moments that if they iconic Zorro. moments for me Zorro yes. and Mihawk. if they fuck up the the onigiri i'm going to lose my shit like i like i'm really scared like how, how would they are, fuck it up? i feel like that one would be relatively I, simple for them to pull I know, off i know i know but like i don't know that and like i'm sorry if i don't feel the emotional weight when he is sticking that sword up in the air and devoting to luffy i will never lose again I don't know why. I get the feeling that the actor that they picked for Zoro is actually going to do a really good job. Yeah, I just no, have no, no, no. a, a yeah, really like, good feeling about him. And same for Sanji's actor. He just seems like he might really be able to pull it off. I don't know why. I just do. Yeah, I saw him doing his kick, like some kick training, and I was like, damn, that's pretty good. You guys want to know actually a cool fact I know about the Zoro one? You will probably not see any kind of publicity about him. Really? Yeah. Has he never done anything before? Or? No, yes, no, he's no, a very no, no. private he, person. No, um, so because of like Japanese culture, he is a Japanese like celebrity, mm. and like because you're in that public eye, they hold that public eye, like to religiously. A, oh, okay. So it's very important to them. Like, yeah. They, they, so like you know, like you'll see all these like I'm sure you guys have seen the like videos of like the other cast members like going out and like socializing together and like partying you'll yeah see, and you you'll don't see, see like him as much you ne- you'll never fucking will hmm. well he is also kind of a loner in the sh- in the crew in general like not not to that extent Son of a bitch. not to that extent <laughs> but if you think about it from like an acting point of view it kind of oh, it kind of makes funny. sense that's hey, really hey, funny. He's, he's method acting. Okay, we're gonna he's take kind a of method acting bro he could be lost maybe he couldn't find the Son- gas party <laughs> i'm just saying you can't rule it out no, well, I mean, I mean, is there any, is there any like, any jokes out there of him being like, "I'm lost"? Well, I know what I'm going to be capitalizing on later. Nice. <laughs> well, regardless, I <sighs> it it makes me I don't know. I'm just going to wait. And done, see, I like, guess yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll have to wait. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Yeah, and just I guess don't don't build up too too high of an expectation. Yeah, don't, don't yeah don't yeah. Like, be open, in my opinion, be open-minded, but also, like, uh, mm. don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up too much. Yeah. Anyways, um, one other piece of news that we kind of forgot, and we, I should have mentioned earlier, that there's a new... Give it uh, to us, daddy. ...official manga trailer for the, oh, it's a Bleach 20th anniversary edition type thing. It was just released, like, a day ago. I was curious, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, like, that Dragon Ball uh, Legends kind of... Like, not the same thing, but, like, it's just like from cool a, something. Oh, yeah. just something cool. Yeah. And it's produced by Viz, too. Let's see. The manga gets crazy, Emery. Ichigo looked very different early on compared to now. Yes, he did. He definitely looked younger. That was cool. That was yeah. Way shorter than I thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be something. Me too. <laughs> uh, okay. I think they were just showing off like a just 20th, a 20th anniversary. anniversary. 20th, yeah, that's cool. Thing for the manga. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, glad that was short. Now we can move on to the next stuff. Yeah. Like a break. Actually, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be back.
look, man, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> True. I'm sorry. I might That's why Martine went to go see that god awful bro, uh, Broly Dragon Ball Super superhero movie. Yeah, I went to go see it yesterday. Wait, was Eric. it terrible? Because, because, uh, okay, so, so one of my one of my homies from work he told me he told me it was pretty good. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna. Is it cool if I give you all a spoiler review, or do you want me to do spoiler free review? Mm. Oh, I don't give a fuck. There's so much shit on the okay, internet that I've okay, already seen. Okay, no, but you got to think. There's some people. I mean, we there's say spoiler viewers, warning in the beginning. Viewers who who might want an actual spoiler free review. They should probably go to a different podcast. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it without. We literally come on, bro. We have merch that says "spoiler warning" on the back. <clears throat> That's true. That's true. We have, we've already talked about the main points, anyways. Oh, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just okay, say what comes what? to mind. Let's just go into. If it. I spoil it, I'm sorry. You can go watch it. I've, it's I've Dragon seen, Ball. I've seen the two fucking forums and the yeah. YouTube like thumbnail so yeah exactly so if i've already seen those yeah that's, so spoiler that's warning for the dragon ball super superhero movie if you don't want to know then just skip ahead a little bit but i went to go watch it yesterday right because mm -hmm. i forgot like eric and i had talked about it we were like oh we might go check it out blah blah, blah whatever we were just you know curious about it and we forgot it. he randomly texted me and he was like hey yo you want to go and i was like uh yeah fuck it i ain't got nothing else to do so we went Fully expecting this movie to kind of just be kind of shit because that's just the idea it's that I had. It's to what it looked like and everything. And by the time the movie finished, it was really good. Mm. Let's fucking go. It was good, honestly. I, I laughed more than I thought I was going to. The comedy was really solid. It was, it was aware of itself. That's what made it good. Mm. The jokes that it did were fully aware of the fact that like, it's Dragon Ball and like people are viewing it in a certain way that it's, you know, a cultural phenomenon or whatever. So like, I don't know, it had some kind of meta moments that I really appreciated and I, I wasn't expecting it, bro. And like, for example, right, this is just a slight example that happens in the in the movie that I've thought about, but I never expected a Dragon Ball movie to address. Mm -hmm. So Saiyans are incredibly more um, enhanced, I guess, because they're aliens. Like, they're Saiyans, right? They're aliens. Yeah, they're, they're aliens from another world. Overall, yeah. better than most humans, right? Like, yeah. physically speaking. Why is Gohan the only Saiyan that needs glasses? Because, like, he genuinely needs glasses because he can't see. Like, his eyesight is kind of poor, right? And oh. I've thought about that. I'm like, what the fuck is oh. Gohan wearing glasses? Like... He really shouldn't. He's a superhuman, essentially. That is his race. Yeah. Why the fuck he is he wearing see, glasses? He can see crazy fast speeds. Why? You're not going to believe this. He needs them for reading? No, so he needs them, actually. And <laughs> he turns Super Saiyan at some point, right? And he takes them off because he's, like, fighting and everything, right? But then after he finishes Super Saiyan, goes back to normal, he's actually going around looking for his glasses, right? He's like, has anyone seen my glasses? Like, that's a line in the movie. And Piccolo calls him out on it, and he's like, Wait, you really need glasses? And he's like, well, yeah, I, I can't really see. And then Piccolo's like, are you telling me that like when you turn Super Saiyan, it fixes your eyesight? He actually asks him that. Uh -huh. So it's heck? almost can. It's basically canon that Super Saiyan fixes his eyesight. That's so huh. crazy. That's so fucking funny, bro. Wait, but wait, wait, wait. My question is, did he answer saying yes? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay, that's oh, way better than what I thought. I was like, I was like, does Gohan fight every fight with blurry seen. eye vision? No, I think Thank his God. eyesight is genuinely just deteriorating because he's old. Because he is also half mm -hmm. human, so that's yeah. not crazy to think that you know maybe he doesn't have perfect eyesight because I of mean, his human bro, his human side. You gotta think, Goten and Trunks actually finally got aged up now, and it took forever to go, for yeah. Goku to yeah. So, there's so many things that I really liked about this movie, honestly. Um, Goten and Trunks being one of them, like, it was kind of short, and, and they were there for a gag more than anything else. Don't expect anything serious out of them, but... Yeah, because why would we ever get anything serious with Trunks and Goten? But that for they did age them up, for... and Goten has a deeper voice, and, like, that's, I kind of just was fucking with it. I was like, okay, he sounds like a teenager. Huh. He sounds close to what he sounded like at the end of Z. And I was mm. I was honestly pretty happy about it. Um, it. They kind of play on the fact that they haven't fought or trained in a long time because it basically is kind of like a time skip. Like the, you know they're older than where they're at now in the manga or show or whatever, and that's why like 
whenever they do the fusion thing, they haven't done it in such a long time that even Goten says like, okay, wait, how does it go again? Because it's been that long since they've done it. And that's where they fuck up. The fingers kind of like, you know, Ding, yeah. miss. They don't, you know, touch on the point or whatever. And that's why like you see fat Gotenks and everything. And what was really fucking shitty though, that pissed me off, but like whatever. At the end of the movie, like there's this whole sequence and everything with like the cameras moving and you see all the characters and you see Goten and Trunks do the fusion and you they do it right. Mm -hmm. And they glow and everything. Then the camera goes past them. And we don't Damn, get to see it. They they really they blue man, balled the fuck out of us. Man, I really hope that they like uh, expand <laughs> on that. Now, another thing I would love to see more old uh, like older Goten. Me too. Trunks. Me too. Honestly, like I think that there's a lot of potential there. Another aspect that actually sold it for me, like for the whole movie, was that the main character of this movie is Piccolo. We start like essentially like with out of the Z fighters, he's he's the first Z fighter to show up and we follow him throughout the entire movie, essentially. And then Gohan gets added later on. But Go Gohan doesn't have a significant role in the movie until at least halfway in. Like it centers around Gohan. The whole point of it, it it's actually pretty surprising. Like Piccolo starts to notice that Gohan is really slacking on his training to the point that he does his closed beam on Gohan at one point. Right. And he does, he has the shoulder pads and everything and go on buckles a little because it's heavy for him. He's like, whoa, like it's a little heavy. And Piccolo's like, really? Because it wasn't heavy when you trained with it when you were a kid. Damn. Oh, shit. Yeah. The writing was fucking crazy. I loved like most of the lines that the characters had. It, it was actually really well done. And Piccolo uses this whole Android situation thing. The Gamma 1, Gamma 2, Cell Max, whatever. Well, the Cell Max was not planned, but the Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 thing to uh, essentially force Gohan to have to rise to the occasion because Goku and Vegeta were off world. They're training with Whis and Beerus, right? Mm -hmm. And they can't get a hold of them. So this is really like one of those situations like, hey, like shit can go wrong if someone doesn't do something about it. We can't rely on Goku and Vegeta. So the entire movie, like we only get, you know, a few scenes with Goku and Vegeta and all we get is just a sparring match between them and their base forms. And it's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, I it's seen, actually I've really seen cool. that. That's, that that's they did it really well. Also, if Bro. I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. it's canon. It's canon. Vegeta beat Goku. Vegeta beat Goku. It's an after credit scene, bro. Vegeta winning. Vegeta wins because the so they were, like exhausted. So what was so cool about this was that like the movie, uh, whenever they go to Beerus's planet, right? You see everybody, uh, Goku, Vegeta, Whis, and everything, and Broly is there as well too because uh, they're training with Broly, which officially makes him also canon too because he's also been mentioned well, and been shown in the too. manga, right? Yes, and it ties in with the other Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, which makes that fully canon as well. So he's there. And he starts like powering up and Goku's like, whoa, 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 like relax. You're about to like, you know, nuke everybody. So just you need to learn to keep that under control. And then Whis po pops up and he's like, okay, like, you know, let's watch a sparring match between Be Goku and Vegeta. And he puts like the rules like, okay, no transformations, no key blast, just straight like fighting, like fisticuffs, right? Uh -huh. And that's what it is. And they really use this opportunity to use that 3D camera to its full potential, bro. Yeah. It follows them throughout the entire like planet you get them going into like a forest area they go underwater at one point too i think like in the air everywhere right you get some angles that you just don't get in dragon ball right and this is like kind of in the middle of the movie but it's really cool because like you actually get to see their fighting and everything and like there's tactics and vegeta's been practice or he's been training and he actually brings up jiren right mm -hmm. he brings up how jiren was like meditating a lot in the tournament of power right and he he felt like that had something to do with why he was so strong and Whis comes in he's like you're actually correct Vegeta. I'm, I'm surprised you you realize that because what jiren does essentially is that he doesn't when he fights he doesn't use his full power all the time consistently it's right before he like he attacks that's when he's like actually using his power and then when he's not attacking he like keeps it in like in reserve so he's like really controlling his energy consistently so that's what Vegeta is doing. That level, the level head. And because of that, that's what he starts incorporating in his fight with Goku. And they even mentioned like, wow, like I can actually see some improvement in Vegeta. Like he's actually giving Goku a good run for his money. And then we cut away from the fight and then we go back to Earth and everything that's going on there. And we don't get to see the conclusion of that fight until the after credit scene where they're both. So you remember Naruto versus Sasuke at the end when they're like, you know, super slow like, punching because uh, they, they are just done. 
Like yeah. one goes through the other cut, the other one's got his head on the Yeah, head. it's like one last like super, super slow punch yeah. and Vegeta gets it and pushes Goku over and Goku's on the ground and he cannot move anymore. He is fully exhausted. He's like, all right, I give up. And Vegeta officially beats Goku. Like, God, you know, yeah. and I, just, I thought that was so funny that they added Yeah, that, right? I love it. Now, another thing, I, this is, I'm trying to keep this concise because I know there's other things that we want to talk about, but Another aspect that I think you guys would actually really appreciate, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, like the um, the androids that are yeah, in there. the superheroes. The superheroes. Yeah. Would you believe that they're really well-written characters? And I was genuinely like... Yeah, oh, absolutely. I loved them. They were one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah. I, you know how I knew they were going to be well-written? Mm -hmm. Cell Max is a dumb fucking animal. Yes. Yeah. There, there has to... I'm sorry. There has to be like... There has to be something there. Yeah. There has to be like actual depth coming from it somewhere mm -hmm. and that was where my money was yeah like they have a lot of common sense which is kind of cool honestly because Good. they're both really different gamma one is i think the red one and then gamma two is the blue one and it's cool because they're essentially like twins they're both you know related as much in, as an android can be mm -hmm. but gamma one has like that more serious you know stoic kind of characteristics and like persona mm -hmm. and gamma 2 is more of like the the fun like flamboyant hey i'm a superhero like don't worry we're we're tough like we're cool so, so like it's that clash of like personality. so like that time that danny phantom got separated and like he had two personalities he had like super chill danny uh -huh. and he was just oh, like oh and super and like, then like super like I'm danny phantom kind of yeah, yeah something similar to that and that's what i really liked about it because they were both like clashing personalities but i don't know they just played off each other. they played off each other exactly they played off each other super super well um their relations to the red ribbon army and where that comes from getting to know more about uh it's dr Jero's grandson is the one who creates all of it right mm. he's not he's actually not a villain he's not a bad guy it's kind of like a case where it's uh he got tricked or manipulated into doing all of this for someone else and I really like it because, in my opinion, like, the writing is not perfect by any means, but for a Dragon Ball plot, I thought that it made sense because the basic premise of it was the fact that, like, they're wanting to create these androids and superhumans and revive Cell in a controlled form because they believed Bulma to be working with aliens and that they don't know what they're planning because they're technically, they found out that they're the ones who actually defeated the original Cell, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not wrong in that aspect you know they are mm. she is technically working with aliens you know who can yeah. destroy the planet at they any, did, moment. any moment and they did technically destroy the original cells yeah so like from a from that perspective not seeing everything that they've done right and also finding out they also found out about majin buu and everything that and they also have like this majin buu creature that could also potentially you know destroy us all or whatever blah blah, blah. they kind of like presented that to dr hedo right and that's what convinced him to be like, hey, like, we might need to protect ourselves. So this is an opportunity to really, like, you know, do something good for humanity, right? And create these superheroes because he has a fascination with superheroes. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. I thought that was interesting because, like, that's why Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 fight Gohan and Piccolo. Because they see them as just, you know, aliens or whatever who are a threat to Earth, right? But then, obviously, they don't know the like, full context. It's like, buddy... Oh my god, that's and, so funny to just yeah. realize it's like, oh, do you know who killed the original cell? Yeah. Him. And Him. <laughs> Look, he, that, he's an alien too, but he's yeah. part human. That one's just an alien, but he was born here. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's part that god. cell's daddy. Mm -hmm. He fused with god. There's so much to it. And, <laughs> and they true, bring that up true. in the fighting. Like, Gamma 1 is fighting Gohan. He's like, you're you're an alien. Like, you you could destroy us at any point. Blah, blah, blah. Antagonizing Gohan. And Gohan's like, what are you talking about? Because the way they got Gohan to show up is by kidnapping Pan, right? <laughs> but the funny thing was, and I, I kind of should have expected this, but like Pan was, Pan was not actually kidnapped. Piccolo kind of set that all up because he infiltrated the Red Ribbon base, found out that they were going to kidnap Pan to bring Gohan out, and so he kind of like manipulated it to where like, oh, this might be a good opportunity to get this, Gohan. This is how to come and like, like step up, right? Like you guys, I like y'all's plan, but this is how you really do it to get Gohan here? Yeah, in a controlled way. So he goes and like sees Pan and everything and like he goes with some other uh, soldier or whatever and like the big tough guy goes and tries to take Pan and Pan immediately does not fuck with him, right? Yes. And this is another really good part. Pan was really well written. I really like, 
actually like Pan being oh, older. She's oh, she's wait, interesting. She's older. She's three. She's older. She's three years old. So she's training with Piccolo now. Well, did she have like? You, you remember how at the end? Of, <laughs> oh my uh, god! Why is that the training she, age? She had like the T-shirt and like the little shorts. No, she didn't have. Does she that. have an outfit or is she still like onesie style? No, she had an outfit. She's let's going to school. Go. Oh, let's go. Yeah, she's it's going to like training, preschool. Yeah. <laughs> Piccolo is the babysitter. Piccolo's picking her up from on, preschool. Bro. <laughs> That's the granddaughter of the hero of the world. She's going to the best, prob- like probably the best. Uh, yeah, the hero oh, of the world, Satan. Oh, oh, oh. You're right. So yeah, hail Satan. <laughs> hail Satan. So um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we don't get the references. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Well, uh, fuck, you really threw me off with that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So they go and try to, the big, you know, soldier guy tries to kidnap Pan, and Pan immediately, like, you know, doesn't fuck with him and doesn't let him. So she knocks him out in one mm-hmm. kick, like, kicks him in the gut, and he is out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because she's been training with Piccolo, so she can kind of fight now, right? She's a quarter Saiyan. And then Piccolo shows up, right? And he's in that uh, undercover outfit, like, the same as a soldier. And Pan, like, looks at him and immediately recognizes, oh, hey, Mr. Piccolo. And he was like, oh, how did you recognize me? Like, well, I can tell by your key. Like, she can read key and oh, realize who it was, cool. right? So that's when, girl. that's when Piccolo talks to her and, and it's like, hey, I think this might be a good opportunity to get your dad, you know, to like training a little bit. So just pretend that we're kidnapping you. I'm going to put these cuffs on you, but you can literally break out of them, break out of them at any point. And she's like, okay, she's totally like, you know, playing oh a lot. Like, I didn't expect what that. Guy, what my dad can do. Exactly. And to really highlight how far Gohan has like fallen from, you know, training is that when they go, they have like record a video of Pan, you know, being kidnapped or whatever. And she's like, come save me, Papa, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Him and that same soldier guy go to um, Gohan's house, right? And they like threaten him. You're like, we have your daughter if you don't meet here or whatever. And he gets pissed, right? But before like they show him the video, Gohan doesn't realize that it's Piccolo. And oh, Piccolo starts wow. thinking, he's like, how does he not realize it's me? Even Pan realized it was me. Is this how bad it's gotten that he like can't he's even, not even reading key? He's not even reading key like automatically and being able to distinguish who's who. And I'm like, oh, like that's that's bad. And it's little wow. things like that that it just was so surprising oh. to me. And it was such good attention to detail that I I was just wow. I was really impressed by it. And you know, when they show him the video of Pan, oh, he immediately like gets fucking angry turns super saiyan and starts powering up it's like where is my daughter like you will tell me right the fuck now or i will kill you like that fucking extreme and oh, he starts shit. powering up and there's like a little crater it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you can see like oh he still has that power like deep deep down oh so, yeah it's, it's all- just buried under all of like you know the the his his work and studies and yeah. shit that he's been doing and like Piccolo notices, like okay, like he he still has the power. Like that's the way go on. Like you the, need to be able to protect the, your family. The tournament of power, like really pointed out, like he may you know like lose the way of the warrior. That power will always and has and always will, will lay dormant inside Gohan mm-hmm. for the moments that he needs to protect his Like he ones. has this bottomless well of power and like mm-hmm. potential that you know really justifies like why he is as strong as he is at certain points right and throughout right, the he's show. He's always the person that cut like when <sighs> Goku and Vegeta are off doing their fucking thing training like and always it's, and it's funny because like even Gohan you know brings up like oh where's like Goku and Vegeta let's let them know so he can come and do this or that or whatever blah 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 and Pickle's like no like stop relying yeah, yeah, on yeah, them yeah. so much you're you are you and it's funny because like well not funny but like I really like that Piccolo does appreciate Gohan and he knows his potential he has so much like faith in him because he's seen what he's capable of you know and it's that like strict father figure that like you know, I want you to do better. You know what I mean? And he does like a quick, even like sparring session, right? He goes and like tries to punch Gohan and Gohan blocks it and Gohan gets cocky. He's like, oh, you didn't think I'm that rusty, right? And then Piccolo immediately goes for a gut punch and knocks the wind out of Gohan. Like, and, like <gasps> knocks the wind out of him, right? And Piccolo is like, look, like if you don't get serious about this, I will beat you to like... I will beat you down until you have no choice but to get stronger. Like, I'm not playing anymore. We're going to make it like when you were a kid again. Yeah. I'm going to throw you at that mountain. 
Uh, it's like it's like when Goku took him into the hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> I'm gonna make a Super Saiyan out of you. Yeah, I am even an adult. I, I am an no. adult. No, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's there was so much in this movie that really like made me respect it more, and like I'm glad that I went in with no expectations, really, because the one thing I actually haven't talked about, which was my biggest concern, was the CGI and like the 3D animation, and I really thought it was gonna be a problem. Surprisingly, it, it was not. It did not take long for me to just be fully immersed in the story. I think that they wrote the story so well that it made me forget that I was watching a 3D, like, you know, animated movie. Right? Excuse me. <laughs> and what I think was cool. So much goes today. Yeah, that's a lot. What was really cool is that I compared it to Super Broly and like, I still think, you know, uh, the Broly movie is better than this one for sure. And that's still one of my favorites. But... What this one has going for it is that it was at least consistent. It was consistent with that CGI and everything, and it never it never took me out of it. There was never a part where I was like, oh, that looks really weird. You know what I mean? Like when like, you've seen, oof. remember the early Attack on Titan season four shit when it was like, yeah. oh, that was like really different than what you're used yeah. to. Yeah. Never did it take me out of the viewing experience, right? Versus That's in Broly, when it was all like 2D animated, Vegeta's fight and everything looked phenomenal. And then as soon as we jumped to Goku, it was a different art style. And when they threw in the CGI, it took me out for a second. I was like, oh, like I noticed the CGI now. Mm -hmm. This movie never did that. It was because it started off strong and kept that consistency through the entire movie. Okay. Like, oh, no. and that's something that I never gave any thought to. I was like, well, if it's consistently looking like that, then we can like, you know, subconsciously forget that we're watching a fully CGI film. And then just focus on the story. And they had a better story than the Broly movie too. Because it was just more interesting with the characters that aren't Goku and Vegeta for once. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. revolve around them. And it was it was well done. I, I can't complain, honestly. It was up there with one of my favorites, at least. So you're saying it's better than Bio Broly? <sighs> Nothing beats that. Shut up. He's yeah, so Gary right. has the physical, bro. That's... <laughs> No, 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 no. His childhood friend did. Oh, my bad. And, no, li and no, lied about no. it. I you have, have the fucking ha! bio. See, I have it. I listen. I also have Super Super 17. I know we have that. The one he I hates didn't... the most. I can't believe oh we have my God. fucking <laughs> bio. Bro. Speaking of GT, there's a part that is so stupid in the movie, but I couldn't help but laugh because <laughs> it's fucking Oh, my God. Funny. Tell me they made a, has fucking made a joke about it. No, they didn't make a joke about oh. it, but it's a part like the dragon shows up at some point, right? Oh, yeah. And they use him. This is kind of like a, okay, I guess, you know, they use the dragon to fully awaken Piccolo's hidden potential. Mm -hmm. That's how he gets his new forms and everything, because he remembers how on Namek, Elder Guru uh, was the one to unlock Krillin and Gohan's potential, right? Yeah. He like broke that barrier. So he goes to Dende and asks him like, hey, can you do the same thing for me? Or I need you to do the same thing for me. And we learned that apparently that's an ability that, you know, his type of Namekian can only do once they reach a certain age. And Dende is still too young to be able to do that. Oh. But that means that he will be able to do that at one some day. point, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is kind of yeah. cool if yeah. you think about it. The ancestors of... <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. So then they come up with the idea, oh, let's use the Dragon Balls and we'll have that. And in my opinion, they should have just asked like the dragon to be like, can you just give that ability to Dende? That way they can do it whenever, but instead they just do it, unlock my ability. Like, that's how I would have done it, but it's Dragon Ball. You know, it can't yeah. always be logical. <laughs> Yeah. So they do that, and he can still do three wishes, right? So that's the first wish. He unlocks Piccolo's uh, full potential, and then that's it. And he's like, all right, w what's the next wish? Oh, it's funny, because as soon as they summon him, too, Shannon recognizes Piccolo. He's like, oh, hey, it's you guys. <laughs> like, oh, my God. It's like the TFS thing when, like, he starts noticing, yeah. like, are you guys again? Like, what the fuck? It's like, <laughs> fuck, all dude, right, who's dead? Yeah, but he recognizes Piccolo. He's like, oh, hey, hey, Piccolo. <laughs> like, he oh, hey, bro. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just, like, you know, it's been a while. the only people that Hello, younger Kami. Mm hmm. So after that wish is done, he's like, what's your next wish? And he's like, oh, I'm done. You can do whatever you want with the others. And P and Bulma's there and she's like, oh, wait, so can I can I use the wishes like for whatever? And he's like, yeah, sure. Knock yourself out. And she wishes for like cosmetic surgery types. And she asks for like a bigger butt, basically. She's like, well, I could use, you know, a little bo bit more like, you know, there. More ass on my cheeks. Basically. And um, she also wishes for like, oh, and like, can you do something about these wrinkles and everything? And Piccolo's like, wait, are you seriously using the dragon for like cosmetic surgery, blah, blah, blah. And the first thing I thought of, I was like, huh, 
Maybe that's why the shadow dragons became a thing because if they're fucking using it for shit like that, bro, I'd yeah. want to just destroy the world too. Be like, they all are fucking abusing the shit out of this. Yeah. That's pretty funny though. But it was funny as fuck. And Bulma like retaliated. She's like, don't judge me. Leave me alone. Like, blah, blah, blah. Was like she has some. Gain height. And, and, that's, and they mentioned that. They actually mentioned that like, <laughs> well, ever since I learned that Frieza used it, you know, to do this, you know, I we wanted to keep the Dragon Balls in a secure location. That way no one else can use them. Right. And Bulma was basically saying, well, well, since I have all of them, you know, like, might as well just use that for... When in Realm. Instead of shopping, she uses the dragon to do her shit. And that... Because she's in charge of, like, keeping all the Dragon Balls in a, in a specific place. Uh-huh. So that's, like, that's what it is, basically. Because they're in charge of going out and finding them before anyone evil does. Keeping them at Capsule Court. Every now and then she'll use them to, for a wish or two, like, for cosmetic surgery and shit. Okay, my guys, you gotta go out and get that's them again. It's like, yeah. wait, like, what did you yeah. make a wish on? Don't yeah, worry. and it was really funny. It was actually really fucking funny. Vegeta gets back. He's like, hmm, I sense something has changed. Yeah. No, there was, there was a lot going for this movie, and you guys might actually like it. Oh, I'm looking forward to watching it. Mm-hmm. I, really, I figured out how she gets them to collect them for her every time. Mm. She just tells him how she's dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm just dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm just dead again. No, it shows that she gets her whole like employee and like Capsule Corporation Shut to go fuck. and find them. Yeah, like Capsule Corp is in charge of going and finding out the Dragon Balls wherever they are, and she goes and like finds them too here and there. But that's her job. This now. is now yeah, like, like she did it as a kid. She made a business out of it. Yeah, pretty Son much. Yeah, of a bitch. it's crazy. They show them in like that's submarines cool. going Fucking and finding lemons them. Lemons and lemonade, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, the humor was really fucking cool. And the last thing I'll end on is like the little transformations that we get from Gohan and Piccolo. Gohan's tra- transformation was really dope. Like, it's just really cool. I'm not a fan of how long the hair is. I think it's absurdly long because it's between Super Saiyan 3, but longer than 2. And it just mm-hmm. doesn't look right to me. Maybe it's because it was CGI. I bet you Probably. if they like, did a, a hand drawn version of it, they could make it look really good. Yeah. I love the red eyes. I think that's really cool. But I prefer Piccolo's transformation. I think it's fucking awesome. He uh, he gets two, actually, technically. When he gets his potential unleashed, it's basically like a little power-up slash transformation where he gets rid of his lines. Uh-huh. Remember, like, we saw that in the trailer? So his base form is regular green Piccolo with all the lines. Then he powers up, and he stays he the same smooth. size. He goes smooth. <laughs> like, he gets rid of his lines, and he's, like, more like a lime kind of yellowish mm-hmm. color. Um, and that's his like, you know, potential unlocked. And then after that, he gets the actual transformation, which he dubs like Orange Piccolo. And he actually names it because Gohan's like, oh, you should pick a name for that transformation. He's like, well, I'm orange. I guess I'll go with Orange Piccolo. And I was like, nice. <laughs> Fitting. We're just going with colors. Might as well. They're very aware of themselves that that's how they label their transformations. Blue oh, my fucking oh. God. Can we please talk yeah, about it then? Saiyan. Can we please talk about it then? And that leads perfectly into our next topic. Take it away. The Dragon Ball Z or the Dragon Ball Super manga has introduced a new form for Frieza. It is dubbed Black Frieza. I <laughs> have you heard about that guy? I, you do realize he he like one hit KO'd both of them. Both of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and they transformed yeah. states. Goku was in Ultra Instinct, Instinct and, and Vegeta, Vegeta was, was in Ultra, Ultra Ego. Ego. Yes. yes, that is the most powerful that they have been at this point in the series. And, and he, he one shot of them with ease. Yeah. I fucking see look fucking no crazy. look they needed to give us a reason for Goku and Ultra Instinct mastered and mm. Vegeta with Ultra Ego mastered mm-hmm. to fuse so we have oh, the God. God damn it he didn't think and about this no I did other. think about it and I don't want it to be and that it's like it's like fusion. like symbolic because it's Saiyans versus person who I don't want destroyed the race. I don't want that at all. I'm sick of fusion. Hey, so hey man. Of I know it sells. I know it. it's merchandising and that's what Dragon hey, Ball bro, is. Which one would you want to see though? Between what? Gogeta or Vegito? Well, we already got Gogeta. Oh my God. Oh my God. I want a better Vegito because the only Vegito we got was in the Goku Black arc and it was dope but it was so short. Oh my God. Dude. Oh my God. You're going to love this. Okay. You got when they fuse Okay, and let's say you get like Vegito, Gogeta, whatever, mm-hmm. <sighs> and they power up. Would that form not be called Ultimate Saiyan? Ultimate Saiyan. You got no because, or Ultra Ultra, ultra, ultra Saiyan. Saiyan Ultra Saiyan. <laughs> ultra Saiyan. <laughs> 
Thank you for saving that. Old You're <laughs> <laughs> I'll be super D for saying <laughs> ultra ego, ultra, ultra instinct. instinct. It super would be ultra. maximum overlord, ultra saying. Gogito or ultra Vegito, I guess. Man, God, I don't want another fusion oh, oh, though. Oh, I just no, want something no, no, no. else. No, and then listen, listen, listen. They're gonna have Goku and Broly or Gohan and Broly fuse. So, so you get you get a double fusion. Hmm. I want someone to fuse with Broly. That'd yeah. be open to. I'm. I look. I yeah. I'd be happy with a Vegito because I want to see more of him. But like, I'm tired of Goku and Vegeta. I'd be so happy with just anyone else coming in and being like, huh? Contributing to this. Did you? And that's why I do. I'm sorry. Sorry to cut you off. I'm just oh, finished this. Thing no, you're real fine. Quick. That's why I do think that they powered up Piccolo and Gohan in this story because it's canon. They needed them to be at a certain level to hopefully kind of like justify whatever is coming for the super manga maybe it's something to where we really do need goku uh vegeta broly piccolo and gohan to be as strong as they possibly can because of what's to come mm. maybe that's what they're leaning to maybe i'm giving them too much credit honestly because it's dragon ball and they no nah, bro we're gonna get bro jiku God damn it, Carrie, what the Dude, fuck? Dude, I bet you, I bet you anything, I bet you anything, he hasn't listened to anything you said the past no, 30 seconds. No, he's been waiting, he's, he's been, just been... And, and, No, he's actually been contextualizing how he pr pronounced the name. I, yeah, uh, God damn. No, I was listening to what he was okay, saying. Okay, okay. I was like, I, I thought of it, okay. let me wait. Because, like, we're talking about fusion. I have, like, I have a, okay, I have a question, okay? Yeah. And it may be stupid, and you're going to hate me for it, but, like, I have it, okay? So, like, in theory... If you take, we'll just we'll just say Gogeta, mm -hmm. okay. And then you took Bulma. Now you motherfucker! I know. No, stop! I hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Like, like, there's a whole fucking box of worms here to open, okay? And Would like, it be Choma. <laughs> I'd go with Bolchi personally. Bolchi, Bolchi, Bolchi okay. Uh, it's too close to Boji. I don't want to violate a child. Bulgogi. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, continue oh, your God. thought, okay. please. <laughs> okay, they fuse. Yes, and then they... And they... Yes. Mm, they fuck. Yes. Okay? Gives her that big bang kamehameha. Uh -huh. And they and, both get pregnant. Okay, that's my would question. Would they both? Hold on, okay. Would one? Exactly. Would one have twins? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, like, when that... When those... Like, okay, like, if you had... The so both of them, Vegeta's and they both had a kid. Vegeta's child, exactly. Whose mm. kid is it? And uh, then now, now tell me. In theory, no, if those both those in. kids fused, wouldn't that actually be the true form of that child? That is way too much to fucking. <laughs> this. Why? Why today? <laughs> it's what I do, Martin. It's what I do. <laughs> that is uh, too no, complex no. for Dragon no. Ball. We'll never no, get that. No, no, no. Vegito, Vegito, <laughs> Vegito, Gogeta, whichever one. They bust the nut. Mm -hmm. The sperms the are ultra be fighting, bro. Like, like, uh, like they're not gonna be swimming. They're gonna be duking it out to figure mm. out who's strongest, and mm. then they'll swim. Uh, There'll be one left. You know how Dragon Ball works. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Would you like to take a break? <laughs> no, I just want to keep going. Okay. So like, oh yeah, yeah. One of the, like the only things we really have left to talk about, and it's kind of nostalgic and not our normal thing. So everybody, buckle up here and just work with us here. Okay, yeah, hear, hear us out. Okay. Hear us out. Uh, I, look, I've been watching. I've been watching Adventure Time, and I have been enjoying it very much. Same. Like, yeah, it, it came out in like 2010, man. It was ahead of its time. Right. It was like random episodics or like random episodes with random stuff going on, right? And they introduce all these characters and build this world in the background, mm -hmm. right? Well, essentially, you're following multiple storylines while they are building up a cast of characters and world building like the actual world and scenery of what's what's going on in this wacky world and like kind of hinting at what led to it being that way right and like you follow finn the human but he's the only human right so that's like a big mystery is he really the only human i didn't realize yeah because it's not like earth he's bro the it's, it's human, the land of uh it's the land it's of the land of ooh. Yeah. i mean it's earth and there's a giant piece missing and there's this thing they allude to called the great mushroom war right oh yeah so they like slowly 
build upon that and it becomes like not an episodic thing, but an actual built up timeline where you can pinpoint the beginning and follow it to the end. Oh, wow. Recently, they they made like four special episodes to release on HBO Mm -hmm. because HBO also has Adventure Time. Um, And it's like come along with me. Right. So it's like the secondary it's like way further after the series ends. Right. Yeah. Right. So you get the whole wrap up with like Finn dying, choosing to be reincarnated. Um, you know, it, it like wraps up a, a couple like it, it like gives you context on a couple and mm-hmm. all, all kinds. Of, that was that was a really good episode. Bro, those, Dude, those, you those. If you haven't like watched Adventure Time and like watched it from start to end, yeah. you should really give it a shot. I might, honestly, because I always felt like I never really liked it too much as a kid. Like to me, it was just so different a, from the other stuff. As an adult, watching. bro, it is some of the greatest. Shit I do that we feel like it would because, like, Dude, I don't know, war, like right? those cartoons were really ahead of their time, but they were also very like they were ahead of their time, but they were so off brand for what was out at that time. Yeah, like they were they were aware of itself. They were aware they had more they like the way for a lot of other cartoons. Bro. Yeah, I think it was just more day. maturely written, weirdly in a more cartoonish way. If yeah. that even makes sense, right? Like it's just there's serious themes about like you know about death, by reincarnation, about storylines, things Dude. that don't necessarily matter in like a Tom and Jerry type cartoon. Storylines and timelines aren't even a thing because it's just episodic. Each episode is like a funny thing that happens and that's it. This is one of the first times that we saw early on where cartoons like Adventure Time or even like some of the other ones like Regular Show and all that yeah, had exactly. like a, a kind of loose storyline that connected, you know, from these episodes. Like, yeah, you could still go and watch random ones and you'd still enjoy it, you know, and you wouldn't feel like you're missing some stuff. But it did have the added benefit that if you did watch all of it, you'll probably notice some stuff because the first one references something that won't get addressed until later on, maybe, you know, and like... Mm-hmm. That started being a thing for cartoons, and I think that's really cool because I didn't realize that as a kid, but now as an adult, I do see it, yeah. and I really appreciate that work. You should watch the yeah. regular show. Dude, dude regular show, that's regular one show. of them. And then, um, you know, of course, Adventure Time. Yeah. Dude, like, you legit Chowder. get to watch Chowder. Finn go from being this immature 13-year-old to, like, a mature... A mature kid going into his, being 18. Right. He's like gone through relationships and mm-hmm. dealt with like existential crisis, you know? Yeah. There's uh, character he, he growth. Loses his arm and so, like yeah. comes to accept it. Wow. And like chooses to live without a prosthetic. You know, like, like there's so much that goes into the writing of the characters that it's, it's, it's like it's more than a cartoon. It's exactly, so much yeah. more than a cartoon. You get to like watch that character actually grow, and those lessons he learns, like they stay with him. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, there's some scenes that they don't address, like human eating or Finn eating humans oh, with the with that. the rainicorns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, again, it, it is an out of pocket kind of mature cartoon when it wants to be. So. Yeah, like like okay, something I don't know if you know this. But uh, Lady Raincorn, she speaks uh, Korean. Yeah, and she says she'd be saying some wild shit. <laughs> really, he was some wild Talk about, shit, like, bro. Running naked in the in the in the corn cornfields with Jake. Jake. Yeah, what like the that's fuck? their hobby. Like that, yeah. Like that's something they do. Like that's like regularly. Their, their, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? And she says that in Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, oh, she says frolicking. Thing. Wait, but does it like translate or something? Or no, you have to? No, know? No, no, no. You have oh. to know. You have to know Korean. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we had we had a buddy that translated it for us and let us know. <laughs> wow. He actually loved the show and like that's, that was his that's favorite pretty character cool. I, for that I mean, reason. This is stuff like that that you don't see in like the older cartoons, like like I said, Tom and Jerry or Ed, Ed and Eddie, things like that. They were just very simple, you know, slapstick style comedy that worked. And then someone decided to be to pay more a little pay more attention, add a little bit of detail. And throw in an adult joke here and there. Because, okay, like, Spongebob has adult jokes, jokes everywhere. all over. Yeah, that's about to say. Yeah, yeah if, if I'm sorry if I ruined your childhood, but you should go back and watch Spongebob if you haven't, bro. There are, like, there are some interesting scenes. Naughty, naughty. Yeah. <laughs> the one I always think of is when uh, Spongebob is watching TV and, like, Gary comes in. And as soon as he meows, Spongebob is like, Gary, and he changes Gary! the channel. <laughs> what the fuck are you watching, Spongebob? Yeah, like, uh, what all know. is that? <laughs> He had the blanket on him and everything. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, man, it's SpongeBob's house. I don't know why he's getting weirded out by his snail, Sam. I mean, let's be real. It's it's Gary's house, bro. That's a good he, point. He runs he that He runs bitch. that shit. <laughs> You know, speaking of cartoons, this is actually a, a good moment to bring it up. I saw a TikTok, right? And the creator of Fairly Odd Parents, mm -hmm. Butch Harmon, Butch I think. Mm -hmm. So you know how he does like the redraws and stuff like that. He's very yeah, active yeah, yeah, on yeah. there. He duet or stitched, I think, duetted another TikTok video where it's a scene from Fairly Odd Parents, a scene that I have never seen before. And I might actually, I'm going to try to look it up because it's kind of a. I don't know if y'all have ever seen it, but it kind of blew my mind when I saw it. And it made me question the entirety of the whole show. So, let's see. Can I mirror this? Yeah, you can mirror from your phone one of that. Well, actually, let me look it up on here so we have the audio as well, too. And I'll cut this other section. I'm very, I'm very, like, very intrigued. Yeah, I'm very intrigued. And I'm just kind of like... <laughs> you have captivated my attention, sir. Can we make, can we make this like the bombshell for the end? Yeah. Y'all ever heard of Timmy's Secret Wish? No. Oh, yeah. Yo, you have, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have not. All right. You don't know. No. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I did not know until I saw this. Clear to the court that Timmy Turner is definitely not the worst god kid. Yes! Objection! On what grounds? Give me a minute. There must be something in these legal briefs. Turner. He hasn't made a million wishes after all. He's made a million and one. Oh, shit. So, what exactly are you saying? I'm saying that Timmy Turner made a secret wish. Ooh. A secret wish? Uh -huh. But that's the ultimate violation of fairy law. Every wish must be accounted for. Otherwise, Godchildren could secretly alter the very fabric of the universe. I think we all remember the last secret wish, December 19th, 1986. Little Joshua Appleby secretly wished for Chuckles, the fairy eating cockatiel. The fairy eating cockatiel? cockatiel yeah. I didn't know that part. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, what's so scary about a silly bird? Oh. He ate fairies. <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> Ever since that fateful day, all wishes have been carefully That's documented funny. to avoid further catastrophe. But somehow, Turner got around the rules. Hold on a second. We never granted Timmy a secret wish. Right, Cosmo? I don't remember. But then I don't remember a lot of things. Hey, what are we doing with the bowling alley? Timmy, what did you do? Oh, damn. Okay, don't be mad, but I secretly wish that everyone would stop aging so that I could stay 10 years old and keep my fairies forever. <laughs> what? Yeah. The fuck? 50 years ago. What the 50 fuck? 50 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> He's been 10 for 50 years. <gasps> When, when? Why did I never hear about this? I had no fucking clue. What? <laughs> I broke Gary's brain. I, I don't. I don't. I don't understand. This and now that we've broken everybody much. else's brain, make sure you guys go watch the video every Thursday on YouTube. Anime Alchemist Podcast. The audio drops on Wednesdays on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and Anchor. Make sure you guys check out our TikToks. I plugged those in the beginning. Make sure you guys uh, check out the Discord, the Misdirected and Pirates. You guys can actually come and watch that with us. We're actually playing a new game. It's called Lamb of or Cult of the Lamb. It's lots of fun. And uh, I believe that's about it. Uh, I think because Gary's brain's broken, I'll help him out. Um, go watch. Uh, shit, what is it called? World Trigger. World Trigger. You How come it's out? <laughs> wow, that was disrespectful. <laughs> I. He's too broken. I need time to cope. <laughs> See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>